How can you stretch your diaphragm? Why would you want to stretch your diaphragm? And what in the world is the diaphragm? These are all questions that we're going to answer today in this video. The diaphragm, it is a dome shaped muscle that transcends going from side to side and from front to back. It is arguably the most important muscle in our body because it's the muscle that we breathe with. What makes this muscle very interesting is that our body engages it without even thinking about it, but we also have this voluntary control over it. So we can consciously take control and use our diaphragm differently than our nervous system would normally use it when we're not thinking about it. This means for us is we have an ability to stretch this muscle. The reason I became interested in stretching this muscle as a chiropractor is because there has been research that shows that diaphragmatic excursion, all that means is the ability to make the muscle stretch this way as far as you can and then stretch back up this way as far as you can, that the ability to do that helps people with chronic and reoccurring low back pain. People with chronic and reoccurring low back pain seem to do better when they have more of an ability to stretch this muscle. Now, there is also a tremendous amount of other research slowly starting to come out showing that diaphragmatic excursion, having more mobility in the diaphragm is related to other health wellness uh, benefits. And in the world of uh, athletic training and sports, they're finding more and more that breathing techniques, the ability to use our diaphragm better translates to better sports performance. So for a whole variety of reasons, stretching your diaphragm might be beneficial for you. So some basics before we get started. To engage our diaphragm the most in the beginning of the stretch, we really want to think about bringing the air down or bringing the uh, diaphragm down. Again, it's a muscle here. When we breathe in, it sinks. What that means for you is I don't want you to start a movement off with a shoulder shrug. That's a sign of somebody that carries more tension up in their neck and their shoulders, or they just don't have a good ability to use their diaphragm. So they use all of these other, what are called accessory muscles for breathing up and through here. So first think about pressing down into something. Think about just pressing your arms down when you take the very initial part of the breath. Number two, a lot of people want to do more of a belly breathing. They used to teach this more in certain yoga classes. Um, I think most people are getting away from this now, but it would look like this here and their belly would come out. Although that's not horrible for the belly to come out and it should come out some, what we really want to think about also is a little bit of the ribs coming out to the sides, coming outward like this here. So something you could do is put your hands right on the side here. When you breathe in, think about this happening. When you breathe out, think about pressing in this way. And you could do that a few times right there. Breathe in and let your hands widen. And then when you breathe out, press in. That will help you mobilize this uh, lower part of your rib cage coming out and in. The other thing, when you breathe in, now in resting state breathing, and what that means is when you are not practicing specific breathing techniques and you're not talking, for the most part, you want to be breathing in and out through your nose. You want your mouth closed. In the very first part of the breath in, I think it's nice to try to breathe in as much as you can through the nose just to practice that. Now I will let you know, I'm about to also show you some rib cage stretches that will want us to get as much oxygen, or I should say just as much air. We want to fill our lungs with as much air as we possibly can. And that might mean that last 20, 25% of breathing in, maybe we go ahead and breathe in through our, through our mouth a little bit, just because for some people it's going to be easier to just get that last little bit of air. Also, I just said, try to keep your shoulders down when you breathe in. When you're getting a full breath, as much air in as you possibly can, that last 20 or 25% might be a, go ahead and raise those shoulders up. Now this is going to contradict what a lot of other 
just people who teach respiration and breathing at a resting state will teach you. So please understand I'm just saying this for the purposes of this stretch to get in that last little bit of air. Go ahead and breathe in through your mouth at the end and go ahead and let those shoulders come in for the big, big breaths in. So the diaphragmatic excursion again, one more time. We want the air to come down. Maybe I want to get a little bit more air in. I can get that last little bit. Now my lungs are filled with air. Now what I like to do is stretch the rib cage. So arms up and I press my ribs out this way as I reach high for the sky. When I breathe out, I might breathe out as far as I possibly can. That's going to bring the diaphragm up this way again. All right, that's a little bit exaggerated, but you can see what I mean. How much air can I get out? How much can I get that diaphragm to come back up this way? And then you could do it again. Maybe this time I'll stretch this side here. Reaching up and pressing my rib to the side. So those are some ways that you can really increase your diaphragmatic excursion or like I said, just think of it as really stretching the uh, diaphragm. Breathe in as deeply as you can, breathe out as deeply as you can. A couple of things to consider. If you are new to breathing techniques, you've not done anything like this before, you're more sedentary and you don't work out too much, this might make you a little lightheaded. Do it sitting down. If you get lightheaded, take a break. It's very unlikely that you're going to pass out from doing these breathing techniques, but why not be cautious? If you have a history of passing out or uh, if you have a heart condition, please check with any primary care physician, uh, health practitioner, just to get a, uh, a go ahead or get their approval. Make sure they don't think that there are any contraindications to you doing these techniques. Um, and then the, the final thing you might be asking, how many times should I do this? Well, it's like a lot of stretches. It's really going to depend on you and what you feel comfortable with. Uh, if you're new to something like this and you've never done anything like this, you really might do this three, four, five times and say, wow, that was pretty incredible. I feel more free in this region and through here. You could do that a couple of times per day. If you're more advanced, you do breathing techniques already, or you're just fit already, you exercise and this is pretty easy, you could do this 10 times, 15 times in through there. Deep breaths in, deep breaths out. There are a tremendous amount of breathing techniques out there. This is just one. I'm not saying this is the best breathing technique. It's one option to really get that diaphragmatic excursion. So hopefully you got something out of this video. Uh, if you like it, give us the thumbs up. Uh, please feel free to subscribe to our channel. And then of course, if you have any questions, let me know. I'd love to answer those questions for you.